What CIA taught me was a better way of explaining what reality actually is. And reality is that 98% of human beings are trapped in their own perception. So the 2% that live in the real world that have perspective, they are able to manipulate the perception of everybody else. This is Andrew Bustamante, a former CIA officer. He teaches everyday people how to apply CIA skills like strategic thinking, effective communication and information gathering to improve their personal and professional lives. So stay with me because this video will show you exactly how to apply these techniques. The phrase perception is reality is commonly used to legitimize viewpoints that might not align with facts. This saying can be wielded to impose one person's view as the accepted reality. On a deeper level, it introduces a sense of subjectivity in situations that are generally considered objective. However, it's essential to firmly state that perception is not synonymous with reality. The first big thing that you hit on, uh, and I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna tweak what you said. It's not about getting into people's perspective. Most people don't have perspective. The average person has no perspective. They live in a world of perception, how they perceive the world around them. Most individuals, at least that's what we learn at CIA, individuals live with a frame of reference around themselves. They're the center of the movie. They're the star of the show. They're the center of the universe. Our personal perspectives shape reality due to our indirect interaction with the world. Our senses act as filters constraining our understanding of reality. The conviction in one's capacity to influence the environment and achieve desired outcomes is a fundamental pillar of personal well-being. The perception of control isn't just the preference. It potentially plays a vital role in sustaining a balanced mental state. This notion underscores the intricate relationship between the mind's sense of control and its impact on human flourishing. So the pink matter that exists in your brain and mine and everybody around us is still very much focused on the self as the most important element. And because of that, it views everything around its, everything around the environment and around the individual through a lens of perception. What I perceive is real to me. To hell with what you perceive. What I perceive is the truth. The nature of reality surpasses the simplicity of our perceptions revealing a complex and multifaceted landscape. What we perceive isn't an unchanging truth, irrespective of our perceptions. Human tendencies often lead us to form assumptions about people, experiences, and the world, guided by our individual and limited grasp of its intricacies. Reality is woven from our truths, which stem from our beliefs rooted in our perceptions. Our perceptions, in turn, are influenced by our focus, and what we search for hinges on what we think. Diverse lenses shape our perceptions. Our beliefs, experiences, and values give rise to varied interpretations of the world's canvas. Each individual crafts a unique version of truth crafted by their distinct life journey, convictions, and worldviews. The variety of perspectives highlights the complex depth of reality, transcending mere perception. What we believe to be the only truth influences how we think, feel, and behave, which can affect the outcomes we experience. What CIA taught me was a better way of explaining what reality actually is. And reality is that 98% of human beings are trapped in their own perception. So the 2% that live in the real world that have perspective, they are able to manipulate the perception of everybody else. So when you first walk up to somebody, you've got to keep in mind that nobody is what they appear to be. Every, every human being has three lives. It's what we're taught, Ooh, three lives. There's a public life, a secret life, and a uh, private life. People exhibit varying degrees of information processing when it comes to understanding others. Some possess a pronounced inclination to deeply grasp the motives behind events and people's actions. These individuals, recognizable in our circles, eagerly seek explanations for successes, failures, or any social interactions. This inclination involves a penchant for thoughtful analysis of experiences and social encounters. 
Those inclined towards the high need for understanding meticulously process information potentially leading to more nuanced casual attributions. Conversely, those with a lower demand for perception may display impulsiveness and hastiness in making attributions. This distinction impacts how attributional differences play out. People leaning towards the high need for perception often consider situational aspects resulting in more empathetic rather than judgmental attributions toward individuals from marginalized groups. So when I approach somebody in spy mode or in business mode or in social mode, I know I'm dealing with a public life first. So are you trying to peel beneath that? Sometimes. Like in spy mode. In spy mode, you have two objectives. Objective number one is to get into someone's private life as quickly as possible. Because if you're not, unless you're in someone's private life, you'll never get into their secret life. Objective number two, once you're in private life, is to become one of the few people that will ever penetrate their secret life. And there's only one reason why you want to penetrate someone's secret life. Because once you're there, you never leave. Once someone has trusted you, with a secret life secret, their fealty to you, their loyalty to you is beyond question. Understanding the developmental stages of the human brain is crucial for comprehending how various factors, including external influences, shape the mind. Just as the brain evolves through distinct phases from its inception, grasping this progression is fundamental to gaining insight into how thoughts, behaviors, and responses can be influenced or controlled different points in this developmental journey. There's from birth to seven years old. From birth to seven years old, we're all sponges. We don't differentiate between true and untrue information. There's just information. The intricacies of perception underlie the judgments that steer our choices. What we deem universal often springs from personal encounters encapsulating our distinctive worldviews. Emotions serve as lenses revealing both light and shadow woven from our own creation. While they might seem spontaneous, they arise from the depths of our primal brain structures, forming a blend of ancient wisdom and fleeting changes. Over the years, what we perceive becomes a reality etched in our minds, influencing our understanding of the world. These perceptions, once solidified, leave an enduring imprint, shaping our thoughts, behaviors, and responses. The complex interplay between perception and reality showcases the profound influence our mind wields over our experiences. The second developmental stage happens from 7 to 13. In that period of time, you can start to differentiate true and untrue information, but you choose which information you want to give more value to. So you're still absorbing it, you still retain it, but you might have a preference for one bit of information or the other. Adolescence, marked by the onset of puberty and continuing into the mid-twenties, signifies a critical phase of transformation. It's remarkable how a person evolves from the age of 12 to 24, showcasing immense shifts across biological, cognitive, psychological and emotional domains. This developmental journey has implications for mind control, as perceptions, beliefs and vulnerabilities can significantly alter during this period. Personal relationships take on new significance, with peers and romantic partners gaining prominence. Additionally, as adolescents transition through education and employment, their susceptibility to external influences and the potential for mind control experience a dynamic evolution. Every step in life is built upon what came before, and when young people step into adolescence, they're not starting with a completely blank slate. The way they grow during this time is influenced by their earlier experiences. However, these early experiences don't set everything in stone. The teenage years are a time when change is possible because of how adaptable they are. This means that even if things haven't gone perfect before, there's a chance to bounce back and grow. It's like a window of opportunity for positive changes, kind of like fixing things that might not have gone well before, including in the context of how our minds work and develop. Puberty from 13 to 25. Nobody thinks about this. Puberty lasts until you are 25 years old. That period of time cognitively is characterized by the fact that you resist some forms of information. So now you actually have the cognitive capacity to hear something and reject it and not even let it come into your brain at all. 
Perception becomes intricate because it isn't uniform for everyone. How we perceive things can vary significantly. Our individual perceptions are molded by our past encounters, our interests, and how deeply we analyze information. This divergence in perception means that a single event or person can be seen in contrasting ways by different individuals. Each of us may enter a shared experience with a different story echoing through our mind and our unique story, our inner dialogue, alters the way we feel. So each of us exits this shared experience with a different perspective on what just happened. And sometimes these differences make all the difference in the world. In our daily lives, unnoticed narratives shape how we perceive and experience the world. These inner stories not only affect our feelings but also influence our understandings of reality. This explains why people in the same situation can interpret it differently. Individualized internal dialogues result in diverse perspectives, often significant ones. The deep and understanding and broadened views, a conscious effort is essential. Our viewpoints are molded by past experiences, sometimes restricting our understanding. Just as blind individuals touching an elephant each perceive it uniquely. Our past can color our current outlook. Negative experiences can narrow our present viewpoint as a defense mechanism against uncertainty. By recognizing and reframing these narratives, we can open new avenues for growth and more apparent perspectives on life. After 25, neuroplasticity is still a thing for the entirety of your life, meaning your brain can always learn something new. But your worldview has been set by 25. So unless something comes in and challenges your worldview and you give it permission to challenge your worldview, you're never gonna change the way you think after the age of 25. Human interaction reveals an intriguing phenomenon. Many solidify core beliefs by age 25, shaping their perspectives. This serves as a cognitive blueprint affecting how they process information. Imagine someone raised conservatively. They might approach novelty with skepticism. This insight provides a toolkit for conversations. This toolkit comprises layers. The initial collects experiences up to the age of 25, establishing a baseline. A deeper layer considers hobbies, social circles, and habits. The strategy is aligning conversations with established beliefs, fostering engagement. Acknowledging formative years' impact allows us to navigate discussions more effectively. How many like personality types do we break into? There's science that basically, I'm, I lean heavily on the Myers-Briggs type indicator. It's what I was taught at the agency. It's what I've seen work in the field. So that's what I lean on. And they break people into 16 category types. Would that be in your dossier? That would be in your dossier. Your Myers-Briggs oh, yeah. would be, in, the estimated yeah. Myers-Briggs type indicator for you would be in your dossier. Whoa. The field officer actually meets you would then be able to tweak it further. Mm. Because again, public life, private life, yeah, secret yeah. life. You might, we might assume that you're an introvert and then I meet you and you seem to act very extroverted. So now are you the introvert that we assumed or are you the extrovert that you present yourself to be? Only way we're gonna find out is by continued consistent experience with you over time, right? If I can get into your private life and especially if I can get into your secret life, then I'll know. Personality traits exhibit diverse variations warranting individualized consideration to illustrate, envision personalities as lenses through which we perceive personal resources. Typically, humans grapple with three core resources, time, energy, and money. All other resources stem from these fundamentals. Every endeavor, no matter how big or small, demands a blend of time, energy, and money. This trio underscores our actions. Recognizing resource utilization's dynamic nature is pivotal. Grasping resource levels and distribution offers invaluable insights. Adjusting interactions based on this knowledge ensures effective communication, aligning with individual resource dynamics for meaningful engagement. The more a person's resources are depleted, the closer they get to their true Myers-Briggs personality. That is interesting. When they're fully resourced, they can fake it. They can act extroverted. They can take extra time to think something through. They can be non-judgmental. But when they're tapped, when the end of the day comes and they're fried, that's when you see who they really are. Mm. So a big part of the process of bringing someone from public life to secret life is to drain them of their resources systematically so that you can see who they really are because it's when they're in that low point 
that you can essentially replicate or mirror their core personality back to them and then they let you into that secret life. The correlation between childhood trauma and later high achievement has an intriguing connection that signifies how adversity during early life can lead to remarkable accomplishments in the future. The concept delves into the complexities of human psychology, highlighting the diverse ways individuals respond to challenges. Some individuals channel their traumatic experiences into a drive for success, while others react differently. This understanding unveils the intricate interplay between personal history, psychological responses, and eventual outcomes. Essentially, it showcases the resilience of the human spirit and the diverse paths people take to shape their achievements in the face of adversity. This phenomenon emphasizes the remarkable potential for growth and accomplishments stemming from challenging beginnings. People who experience the right amount of childhood trauma, the right amount being enough that you had to prove something, mm. but not so much that you had to adopt external coping mechanisms, right? Whoa, well said, like drugs. Correct, drugs, addictions to pornography, mm. uh, substance abuse, sub submitting yourself to the authority of others, right? Like there's a certain amount of trauma, that's the right amount of trauma that turns you into this high achiever. You always have to win something because you're trying to win favor, win attention, win rewards, win glory, win something. So you're always achieving, you're always driving yourself towards something, but it's not because you were born with drive. It's because some part of your childhood, those formative years, taught you that by achieving, you will be rewarded. So that becomes the inherent thought, by achieving, I will be rewarded. So now all of a sudden you project that onto a 40 year old, a 50 year old, a 25 year old, they're gonna have all the drive in the world because they believe they will be rewarded. Exploring the dynamics of human interaction unveils a fascinating realm, the art of effectively managing and influencing people. This skill transcends surface level friendships, delving into the realm of strategic manipulation. The focus here isn't about casual amity, but engaging with individuals who hold critical information. The core objective in this realm is to identify these influential yet vulnerable figures and establish connections. This process involves nurturing trust, gaining insight into their personal lives, and understanding their motivations at a profound level. This high level of commitment establishes the bedrock of relationships formed. What's intriguing is that the end goal isn't transient interactions, it's about embedding these relationships into the fabric of interactions. The objective is to foster robust rapport and trust, allowing the connection to endure even as primary individuals transition out. This intricate orchestration involves a blend of strategic manipulation, foresight, and an understanding of human psychology. It hinges on deciphering motivations, vulnerabilities, and aspirations to forge relationships that serve broader interests. This complex dance showcases the extent to which human interactions and motivation can be explored and harnessed, underscoring how interpersonal dynamics can be understood and skillfully employed for overarching objectives. Do you reveal who you are at some point? Sometimes. Sometimes you reveal who you are. Sometimes it's better to leave what we call a fig leaf, where they think they know who you are, but they're never really sure. Mm because if they were sure, they might self-destruct, right? Right. That's another thing, another predictable human thing. Human beings like to self-destruct. We feel like to self-destruct. We like to self-destruct. What? Yeah, we all carry this self-destruct button on our chest. That's what we say, right? A big red self-destruct button. Lying can become a reflex when trapped, leading to compounded falsehoods. However, the weight of deceit eventually triggers the realization that honesty is the sole way out. Confronting the consequences and admitting the truth becomes the sensible choice, a pivotal reckoning in personal and professional situations. On the contrary, some vehemently avoid lying due to their fear of facing critical moments. For them, truth remains a steadfast choice driven by the desire to evade the repercussions of dishonesty. Choosing to exclusively embrace honesty builds a reputation grounded in truthfulness, 
fostering trust in interactions. Embracing candor not only benefits relationships, but also acts as a personal evaluation tool. Furthermore, some behaviors could lead to self-destruction, often shaped by the notion that unlikely forgiveness offers a fresh start. However, life lacks a reset button. While reinvention is possible, true resetting isn't an onward journey with no reverse gear. The past remains, but moving forward holds the key to growth and change. And we keep thinking that we can reset. We keep thinking that we can go back to the blank slate that you already said never actually existed. We can't. We have to keep playing the game. You have to, you can retreat or you can advance, but you can't restart the war. Mm. You're in it. You're in it and you've only got one chance. You've only got one ride on this rock that circles in one direction, right? Time only goes one way until we find out how to do it otherwise. Our current reality demands acknowledgement, a call to embrace our path instead of pursuing alternative perspectives. Embracing this reality brings forth two key insights, the recognition that a true reset is implausible and the potential to glean wisdom from experiences. Frequently, self-destructive behavior stem from misinterpreting the present, convincing ourselves that a new beginning holds more promise than building upon our existing foundation. In a world of perpetual progression, embracing the truth of our journey offers a clear vantage point. Accepting the limitations of reset directs our focus towards evolution rather than seeking an elusive restart. This shift in perspective aligns with the wisdom gained from experiences underlining the value of growth and adaptation. Understanding that the path forward is forged on the lessons of the past empowers us to make deliberate choices. Ultimately, the power lies in choosing to build upon our foundations, utilizing the accrued knowledge as a driving force. Navigating the complexities of life becomes a process of growth where the past provides insights and the present offers opportunities. This outlook signifies a journey forward, a continuous evolution anchored in the reality of our existence.